In this video, we're going to show that the bivariate normal is a density and integrates to 1. So here's the density, and I have another video that shows how to derive this, that it is a bivariate normal distribution. And in this video, we want to show that it integrates to 1. We have to integrate it over both x and y, and each of those go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So a lot of times in statistics or problems you're solving, you try to kind of reshape the original into something that looks like another known distribution, and then it's much easier to integrate. So what our goal is, we're going to take our original bivariate normal and, and uh, we're going to reshape it into two different distributions so that we're, this is going to be g of x times g of x y and the reason we do that is we can t since we're integrating y first we can take out everything that looks you know that has an x in out of the uh, integral of y because x is constant when you integrate it with respect to y so we get something that looks like this so integrating over y there could be some x's in here but they're constant and the goal is to make this look like a normal density. But when you integrate a normal density over, you get 1. And then that drops out. And you just get g of x. And, and since that's a normal density, it integrates to 1. So that's sort of the approach that I'm going to use in, in this video. And let's start so first of all this is the normal density where this is unchanged uh, this piece is has been separated into two and then we're multiplying by one and the reason it's one is e to the this uh, exponent and then minus the same exponent. So when you combine those, it's e to the zero, and anything to the e to the zero is one. So that we are multiplying by one. But this piece here, that looks like a normal distribution with mean mu one and sigma one squared for the variance. Okay, so this is the g of x, <coughs> and this is everything else. And we're, I'm just gonna call this k, on the next line because I don't want to keep rewriting the same thing. So then we have to take this exponent and combine it with this exponent. And notice that if this is in the numerator and the denominator is 2 times 1 minus rho squared, if we multiply by 1 minus rho squared and divide by 1 minus rho squared, that's multiplying by 1, it doesn't change it. But the denominator is then like this one. So that's what we do on the next step. Okay. So this x is the same. This 2 minus x. This piece is here. But but this piece comes in. Remember you have to multiply it by 1 minus rho squared. Um, but we need the negative because it's coming in as a positive. So if you were to multiply this piece back. The negatives cancel, the 1 minus rho cancels, and you get this piece back. Okay, so this is how you bring it in. And then, as I said, this piece is k, and then we have g of x. Now, here, when we multiply this into the minus rho squared, or actually positive rho squared, and then this is minus that, and then we have plus that, so those cancel. So the only piece left is the rho squared times this. And then, of course, we have this. So this step, that comes down, this comes down, and this combines to that, this piece here. Well, this kind of looks like a, uh, you know, when you foiled a, uh, an A, you know, plus, or an A minus B, or an A, and so squared. And so... If this is A and this is B, and then then this can be rewritten as a, a squared term. 
So, you know, this times itself, you get that. This times this. And then that times that, you get two of those. And then this times itself, you get that. So it is a squared term. And we still have the k and the g of x coming down. Now, next thing we want to do is factor out an, a sigma squared. So we can take it out of this first parenthesis and do nothing. But the second parenthesis, to take it out, we have to square it. But then we have to multiply over here. So if we uh, times it times sigma squared, divide by sigma squared, that's 1, so it doesn't change this. But then we factor out a sigma squared, and that makes it squared because of this term. And then we can put it in this, this uh, denominator here. And that's what the next step we do. So that's the sigma 2 squared is here. And then the numerator is y minus mu 2 and then minus this. And that's the sigma squared that we factored out. Sigma 2 squared. Well, this com if we call this piece c, or you know the plus of it, this is c. And this piece right here, call it d squared, or the square root of d. And then, uh, so, I'm going to come back up here. So this, this here, sigma squared, square root of 1 minus rho squared, if we call that d, then this is d squared, which is this, and that's d. Well, look at this formula. That's a normal distribution. So notice there's no y's over here, so it's all constant. There's no uh, y's here, or x's, so that's constant. And so we have a normal density, where c is equal to this, and, and d is, is uh, equal to this. So we've effectively broken up our bivariate normal into the product a sort of two normal-ish distributions. And if we were to integrate this piece with respect to y, it integrates to 1, because this is a normal density. And then that drops out, and it leaves that g of x, which is also a normal distribution. So what we have shown is that if we take this bivariate normal, and we can separate it into two pieces, then this piece goes out, you know, front of the integral sign, which is here. And then we integrate this piece first. That's the normal density, so it integrates to 1. Then we get uh, g, just g of x. And then if we integrate it, it's a normal distribution. So it integrates to 1. And so that's what we wanted to show is that it integrates to 1. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like it and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.